Have you ever wondered whether it's worth buying a large 4K TV at a much lower price than a large 4K computer monitor and whether in fact that TV would be just as good? Well, I've actually done it and I thought I would give you some real life experiences. And that's partly because, well, if I look at all the websites that do reviews of things like that, they seem to obsess with things like color quality and black levels and even the finer detail of color, such as whether the video data is sent as RGB 8-bit or YCRCB420 where the black and white image is sent in a bit more detail than the colors. The fact of the matter is I'm not sure how important that really is compared to some of the really gross differences that I found. Well, the most glaring difference is in fact whether the surface of the screen itself is matte or glossy and I used glaring for a very good reason and that is because if you have a glossy surface which is typical of many TVs you get glaring reflections it's almost like a mirror if you have something like a window behind you now this monitor which is an LG 43U N700-B, and of course I have to look that number up, is a really nice monitor to use. I chose it because it was one of the cheapest and it's probably in the 600 buck range right now, but it varies and its screen works very well when there is a window, in fact, behind the TV camera that's recording this. And you probably don't see much of a reflection of that window at all. But if we look at an RCA 4K TV that I've set up in the basement where I actually have a walk-in glass sliding door, well, you can see the sliding door in the reflection of the very glossy TV screen. Now, why are TV screens glossy and monitor screens typically matte? Well, it really has to do with how close you are to the screen. If you're really close to the screen, reflections are more important because it's like sitting in front of a big giant mirror and, well, you've got a whole wall of reflections right in front of you. However, if you are sitting in front of a TV, usually at a much bigger distance, it's easy to move away from that reflection from a window if it is a problem. So to me, that is perhaps the biggest difference between TVs and monitors is in fact whether the screen is glossy or matte and it is well worth looking into before you decide to save maybe 400 bucks by going with a TV set rather than a monitor. The second thing that I found is with a monitor, you're pretty much always set up so that when there is a video signal from the computer, the monitor can automatically turn on. And this one does that, well, almost without thinking. TV sets, however, are another matter. I tried one TV set where if you used a SVGA analog video input, it would automatically turn on and then turn off when the video input went away. However, I have yet to find a nice TV set where it does the same thing for HDMI type inputs. It doesn't mean there aren't any, but I sure haven't come across one. What I did find is some TVs, particularly hospitality TVs, which I use over my lab bench, can actually be set if you go into the installer menu so that they automatically turn on when power is applied. And if you use one of those smart energy saving power bars that used to be so common you can set it up so that when your computer powers up the monitors go on that way so i would classify that as more of a nuisance the rca tv that i've set up in the basement which is actually set up on a computer that's a clone of my office pc well that one i have not found any way to get it to 
automatically turn on. So the nuisance I have is, well, you have to press a remote control every time you want to turn it on. Now, the good thing is it does turn off automatically when there is no more video signal applied. So I would suggest those are the two big differences, more important than anything like the finer details of the color. Now the last thing you might be wondering is, why on earth is he using two hospitality TVs over his lab bench? Well, the truth is I managed to get them real cheap. The Habitat for Humanity Restore was selling them for 75 bucks, and they are 1920 by 1080 or 2K type resolutions. And I find that actually just perfect for having quite a distance away from where you are when you're working on a lab bench because you can have everything nice and big and it doesn't matter whether you're using close-up glasses or anything else, you can always see it. You can also see what's on the screen from the other side of the room which can be useful when you're doing experiments. Now there are a couple of features that I consider who cares features but a lot of people are quite worried about. One of which is whether a monitor like this has some sort of a USB hub type feature so you can plug in multiple devices like a keyboard and a mouse and other things. And as far as I'm concerned, that's probably not a good idea because when you're plugging things in, there's always a potential of eventually causing problems or something to fail. Well, it's generally way cheaper to just have a separate USB hub somewhere else that if it fails, well, it's a $10 hub as opposed to a $600 monitor. The other thing that I'm also less concerned about is the speakers because realistically the speakers in a monitor of any kind or a TV for that matter are never that great. I mean if they're just needed to listen to the odd YouTube video or something like that well that's probably fine but if you want really nice high quality stuff well you really need separate speakers and to that end I actually have set up a Class D amplifier and a couple of good quality speakers around my workstation so that I can listen to good quality video while I'm working, which is kind of neat. One thing that is worth pointing out when you're looking at TVs like this is the time it takes between the video signal going in and when it actually gets displayed on the screen. And if there is too much of a lag, it could appear that the mouse is in fact lagging behind your movements. Well, I have not seen that happen. I gather if you are a gamer and I'm not, even what appears to be a adequate TV for mouse movements may not be nearly fast enough for the gaming applications. You do definitely need a 60 hertz refresh rate because if you use 30 hertz, there is a noticeable and annoying lag between when you're moving the mouse and when it appears to move on the screen. So that's why it's important, whether you're using a TV or a monitor, to make sure you're using a video card that can support 60 hertz at whatever the desired resolution of the TV is. That's the differences between using a purpose-built computer monitor and a repurposed TV as a computer monitor when you need something like a 43-inch or other large-size monitor and don't really want to pay the big bucks that purpose-built monitors seem to command. Whether you go one way or the other, really depends on your circumstances and how much these different features are important to you. Perhaps the best thing to do is to try them if you get an opportunity. And the easiest thing is if you do have a 4K TV or a friend does try hooking your computer to that TV and see if you like the quality and could use it for whatever you normally do on a computer. And I should maybe point out the reason I love giant displays like that for my workstation and that is when you're doing things like programming and this is Eclipse with some Java programs, there's nothing like having a lot of real estate on the screen to look at code and scroll through code and look at running applications and various program packages and to have all sorts of other things going on such as outputs of 
stuff in other applications such as VNC from perhaps devices that you're developing stuff for. So there's really a lot to be said for a lot of real estate. Even for non sort of programming type of applications, it can be very useful. Just having, for instance, a spreadsheet open and a word processor open and perhaps email and something else all at the same time so you can seamlessly cut and paste things from one to another without having to cover up one application or another is an immense time saver. And I am a now fervent advocate of large screens. Now, having said that, if you're a bit younger than me, you might find that a 4K screen that maybe is only 32 inches in a diagonal size would be just as good because you can make everything just a bit smaller and your eyes will be able to handle it much better than my can. So that brings this video to an end. I hope it's useful to anybody considering that sort of a choice. See you next time.